Hi guys, I hope your day's off to an awesome start. Um, I'm sitting here today with a bunch of bare minerals. I use this little like cupcake basket all the time, but I've got it full of different Bare Minerals products. A lot of them are new, and a lot of them, oddly enough, are things that I had at one time, but I've now repurchased because I'm really looking into this brand all over again. When I started to have some skin issues a little while back, I started really thinking about what might be most gentle on my skin, and I do really feel like this is a skin-friendly brand, but overall, this kind of made me think, I want to revisit some of these brands that have kind of fallen off the radar for me a little bit. Uh, maybe a brand that at one time I was really into or there was a certain thing in the line that I just loved. But brands evolve, things change, brands get new products, and it's worth revisiting. So um, if you're interested in this series, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments section what brands you think kind of fall under this category. Here's another one that came to mind, Alme. There was a time when I was obsessed with certain Alme mascaras. Like I thought they were doing mascaras the best, but now the brand since that time, you know, everything kind of turns over and changes. So it's worth experimenting with again. But where Bare Minerals is concerned, I mean, there's a lot to know about this brand. I feel like you need to be educated on the products, how they apply best. Like it's not just something that's a real no brainer. Like it really helps to find Shelby Wilson's YouTube channel and watch how she applies them, the amount of time she takes like applying the original foundation, let's say, and just the strategy involved because it's a gorgeous end result when you do it right. It doesn't look like makeup. It doesn't feel like makeup. Makeup, and yet you have achieved coverage that takes away, you know, all your problem areas. And it's really fascinating because me, I'm sitting here, you know, I've got melasma here. I've got stuff over here. I've maybe got some redness, got some under eye. And I tell you what, I can actually cover it all up just with mineral makeup. And it's crazy, but I wouldn't have thought that. So it has surprised me all over again. And there are some things that I've tried that are newer to me. I actually asked on Twitter before I did sort of this big, Ulta Hall where I got a lot of new Bare Minerals stuff. I asked on Twitter first. I got some great advice. I had tons of tweets back uh, recommending different things to me. I would say one of the biggest recommendations was the Complexion Rescue and also the Gen Nude Liquid Lip Colors, which I already have some of these. I know these are awesome. They are one of the best liquid lipstick formulas out there. Oh, and there were quite a few people who liked the um, Bare Pro Concealer, which I already had on hand. So I've got quite a few products here today. There are some things where I might have of uh, several of a certain type of product. I'm only one face, so I'm not gonna be able to put them all on at this time. Oh, another thing that got a ton of support on Twitter, by the way, just popped in my head were eyeshadows. And I do have some of those too. I've been a big fan of the Ready formula, you know, when they came out with smaller palettes and they had quads and duos and stuff. And I've got a couple larger palettes pulled up uh, here today. But before I get started, just thank you to everybody who weighed in and gave me advice on products I should try. And thank you to Shelby who I just, she's such an educator, I feel like. She's helped so much when you watch her videos. You really understand some of the uh, misconceptions sort of about the brand. And I will definitely link to her below. I would really recommend um, checking her out. She's great. I'm gonna use this kind of as moisturizer, but it's a little bit of a tint also. Um, so many of you said you gotta try the Complexion Rescue. And I'm pretty sure this was like the first thing listed under the bestseller of this brand when you just look at it on Ulta's website. It's called a Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream and it does have SPF 30 and I got Wheat 4.5 and that is definitely my perfect shade. That's another really awesome thing here. I feel like I ended up, even though I ordered so much of this stuff online, I totally ended up with the right shades, which is kind of miraculous, but Anyway, I'm gonna dab this around and I will just blend it in with a brush. So the coverage that you get out of this is going to be light. You know, this is on the level of being like a tinted moisturizer. But from an overall standpoint, here's what I think it does. I think it kind of evens out my skin on the whole. And I also think it gives my skin this sort of look of radiance that is comparable to my Aveeno Positively Radiant, but obviously this is coming in a much better shade range for everyone. This Bare Minerals product is. But when you look at it all blended in on my skin, I feel like, yeah, it's kind of a gentle luminosity to it, right? On top of it, it does feel lightly moisturized. If you were super dry, maybe you'd want to go, um, 
even more like just with your favorite thicker cream underneath this. But I could see me wearing this just for like going out to the pool, wanting to have a little bit of coverage on my skin, but not tons because it does do a little overall evening out. And again, wheat 4.5 could not be more perfect for me. Now, another thing that I picked up on my girl Rachel's recommendation, she comments on my videos a lot. Thank you, Rachel. Hi. And she knows a ton about Bare Minerals and she said, try the Primetime BB Primer SPF 30 in medium. So I've used this a time or two as well. It has a beautiful texture. So maybe I'll work this in into another video, but I do have both of those products and I see them both as kind of a prep step. Now I was going back and forth the other day when I was thinking, how am I gonna do this video? Do I wanna just do purely the powder products just to really exhibit how good the coverage can be with that and that alone? And I think that is what I wanna do today, but I will show you what I have. And I've talked about this before, my Bare Pro. This is my little stick concealer that I think is so good on blemishes on little patches of redness. It's a great textured stick concealer. It's amazing coverage. It has really good staying power. I am the shade Fair Light Neutral 03, and I've just, I've really loved that. I've had that kind of before this whole um, Bare Minerals Renaissance here on my channel. And then um, this was another recommended product by a lot of people, I would say, um, the Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer in Light. Really like this concealer. I actually think it looks beautiful up on the under eye area. Oops, just, you know, knocked myself in the nose with it. Um, but I am going to not use this today. I'll pull this in another time. There really could maybe be a part two and I could do another full face of Bare Minerals. But I think I'm just gonna go with mainly the powder stuff. So that would mean I'm starting with the original foundation in medium beige and this has SPF 15 in it. And if you're not familiar with this stuff at all, they have really tremendous packaging. It's like the best loose powder packaging in the game here because they've got that little sifter dial almost that turns and opens up and you can just open up like one or two of the holes and then tap it into your cap. And it's important to go into this not really even envisioning this product as powder foundation, but as something that's going to almost transform on the skin to this X Factor kind of product, practically like a cream. Not that it turns goopy creamy on the skin, but it actually does, I think, work with the heat of your skin and the buffing motion that you do with it. And it becomes very much one with the skin if it's done right and if it's built up little by little. That seems to be one of the biggest things I've heard about this that you need to know. And I feel like I'm still learning, by the way. If you want the authority, go to Shelby, but I mean, I'm just, this is my journey here with it. You tap a little bit in, not too much. And it's funny how even some Bare Minerals things that you've only had a little while look like you've had them forever because the cap kind of gets stained with the product. That's where the powder is there. It's just a little bit. And I've been using this brush that came out of my Morphe set. It's like just a flat top kind of buffing brush. And I pick up the product there in the cap and I kind of get that feeling that, okay, it's pretty much worked onto the brush. And then I just start buffing it onto my cheeks. And the process is kind of slow, I must say. And it's something that you kind of have to I don't know, be aware of, be willing to accept if you really wanna make bare minerals work for you. I wouldn't say maybe this is gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but um, you build it up very little by little. It's about small layers of product. Um, and I think I've seen for myself in the past when I've applied it the wrong way and I've tried to work on way too much product onto my skin at one time, I'm like, Hmm, this just kind of looks like it's sitting there. It doesn't look like it's covering that much, blah, blah, blah. Well, I wasn't really applying it in the right way. And if you want full coverage, you can get it, but you've got to be kind of patient with it. So I am just buffing it in all over and one layer looks light, you know, but you really take the time to work it in. This isn't just me like I usually am, like losing track of time and just talking. And no, I really do take this amount of time to buff in one layer of the product. And then, I'm gonna get a little more. And I'm not sure if this is the right strategy or not, but because I started on this cheek the last time, so that probably got the most product. Now, when I tap a little more into my cap, I'm gonna start over on the other cheek. Oops, now I accidentally shook on a little too much there. So I'm gonna kinda shift a little bit of that to one side of the cap and focus on about half the amount that actually went in there. And I'm gonna start over here. 
And I'm not pressing super hard, by the way. I'm just, I'm just buffing, you know? I'm just circular motions all over the skin. But by the time I start working on that second layer, I feel like I'm really starting to see some coverage. And then, guys, I'll probably do this a third time. And then I'll be like, yep, all right. We're working with something here. And then I have some Bare Minerals Powder Concealers that will target my specific problem areas. Now I'm gonna pick up that remaining amount and I'm gonna start kind of right over the nose with this. Getting it here and buffing right over the sides of the nose first and foremost. And then just a little circular motion buff kind of making sure I get over the surface of all of my skin without going back for any more product because apparently the brush really does hold a lot of product. I will go back over the skin probably two times the same areas where I just put product. So there we go. There's my application of the Bare Minerals Original Foundation. I don't have the matte, but I know there is a matte out there. And the original is known to have, I wouldn't call it a luminosity so much. The finish of it mimics a natural sheen that might be on your skin. I can't pick up on any actual shimmer, but you see how I've put on like three layers of powder on my skin, but as I turn my head, you can still see sort of, it looks like natural skin. The original has that quality to it. The matte is just more matte. Now I have kind of a history actually on my channel with the Bare Minerals concealers. For the longest time, like I would use this as kind of an under eye setting type of step. I use the well rested at times. Um, I would bounce around between bisque and summer bisque. The difference in color tone, this is summer bisque here, this is bisque. Bisque has a little bit more of a pinky tone and the summer bisque, both now have SPF 20, but the summer bisque is a little bit more yellowy beige. And here's what I do with this product. I get a smaller brush and this is just a little one from EcoTools. It's probably an eyeshadow brush. But we're going to get concealer like coverage. So I tap a little bit of my product here into the cap. I kind of like stamp my brush down into it and make sure the brush has really picked up some product. And we're going to go first over my melasma. You could see it peeking through and I just kind of stamp over it. And it's kind of amazing the coverage level on this stuff. Like it actually blows my mind a little bit because there are liquid concealers out there who can't actually cover this as well. So if you really have your heart set on using Bare Minerals and somehow you've got this mental block on, no, it's just powder, it can't cover up my, my really bad problem areas. Like it can, if you're using the right combination of products. So that's Summer Bisque right over the area there. And then there's gonna be one more step that I do take on the under eye. But I'm gonna take a little bit and go around here too. Now, I'm not saying this is the ideal texture for everyone on your under eye. If you have a lot of texture or a lot of wrinkling on your under eye area, you may want to like focus on maybe that serum concealer as your main coverage step here. And I would put that on first and then buff on my mineral foundation over top. That's just my thought on sequence of products there. I could be wrong or there could be a better way to do it. I would generally start out that way. And then I'm also gonna use this over redness around the nose, which the original foundation did do a pretty good job of covering that up, but you know, you can make it look extra flawless just by stamping in, kind of pressing in some of that summer bisque. So now I've got no summer bisque over here and I do have it all over here. And the coverage looks really, really nice. And I'm using just small amounts of product here but I'm gonna go over and do it on this side. If you just have any pinpointed spot or blemish or anything, I know Bare Minerals mineral foundations are popular, but this has gotta be some sort of unsung hero of the brand. And I'm majorly rediscovering this because I used to use this a lot. And then I don't know what happened. Well, I, no, I do know what happened. You just, you're trying new things constantly and old things kind of get pushed to the back. It's as simple as that. Redness around the nose, broken capillaries. 
And you know what? I am pretty confident in this stuff and I'm pretty confident in the staying power too because we're getting some family pictures taken tonight. And also for lunchtime today, I'm meeting fellow YouTuber and friend Mary Ellen who lives in our area and we're going out to lunch today. So like I kind of want my makeup to hold up and look nice today and I, I do trust this stuff. So that's the original foundation now plus the Summer Bisque, which I had this really huge size of this. This was probably my most recently purchased bare mineral thing before a lot of this other stuff came along. Now, here's what I'm gonna do because I can still see a little under eye darkness and I feel like there's a great product from this line to tackle that and it's called Well Rested. And by the way, as far as the bisque products go, those concealer type products, there's a shade range there. There are deeper colors available, but this Well Rested is really brightening and I've heard people say it is kind of the finish that the original foundation has, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's definitely lighter in color than the Summer and then I'm going to use a little less pinpointed and more fluffy brush. This is my e.l.f. small tapered brush. And then I'm just going to kind of dab this on my under eye. And I feel like it helps take away any darkness that's there and just gives that whole space of my skin a bit of a lift. So just dabbing it in around the inner corner, under eye, and just over on top of where I... Um, specifically concealed the melasma. I'll also take some of it down my nose because it's just it's brightening for anywhere. And guys, I welcome your tips, little tricks that you've run into that would help me or anybody else reading the comments section. Just feel free. Let me know. This is kind of a culmination of things I've learned watching others things that I feel like just have ended up with the best result for my personal skin issues. But look at that. I mean, what melasma? What melasma? It's just bare minerals. What? Don't underestimate the bare minerals. So this is it for what I would call coverage on my skin with bare minerals. Like any additional things that I go to put on now are gonna be like more of a bronzer type step or a blush. But this is what I get as far as just getting even coverage, getting rid of the problem areas. This is the full coverage and I'm very, very happy with it. So pros and cons to this, I would say it takes longer than just slapping on some liquid foundation and your favorite full coverage concealer. It's a bit more tedious in application, however, the pros would be that you end up achieving the same coverage level, like you get to the same end as you got to with a liquid foundation, but it doesn't feel like much on your skin at all. And also it doesn't look cakey. And there are products we're gonna add in now that I think are going to give the dimension and give the glow to the skin. And it's gonna really fascinate you that it's all just mineral makeup, I think, by the end. Like, is this fun? I am having a blast. I hope you guys are having fun too. We're gonna talk bronzery type stuff now. I, um, in the past, had been very familiar with the faux tan and I've repurchased that. It's a very like rich, bronzer type color, um, could definitely double as a contour. But then there's a product I saw on Ulta's website that I'd never heard of before and it's called A Little Sun. And this is very warm and I would almost think of it like a blush practically. Like it looks really good around my hairline but it also looks good just kind of right on the cheeks. But this is the color of faux tan. This is Give Me Sun. You can see Give Me Sun is a lot lighter and it almost has a little bit of a coppery, rose goldy vibe to it, whereas um, faux tan is more like traditional rich bronzer. Then I also had this product called Invisible Bronze, which I remember being a little like, eh, I don't know what to think about this. I have this in tan. I've had this on hand for a little while and it is like a really lightweight, um, very subtle bronzer. And so those are my three options. I wanna show you a little sun going on because I think it's really pretty. And again, it has the same little mechanism there with the twister cap. Tap. It twists open a little so you can tap some in. This does have a little shimmer in it. And I like to use just my e.l.f. complexion brush here and dab into the cap and really just pick up the color. And then take this around my forehead and I can see it immediately here in person that I've just given my skin a little color. It's kind of funny because you see it all like concentrated here in the container and you're like, okay, that's what it's gonna look like on my skin. But even still, it surprises you because it's shearing out over your skin, you know? So you can't really fully judge it. 
by what you see in the container. But I kind of love the little bit of radiance I can see in my skin with that. So I've only put that on my forehead so far. I'm gonna take some down the neck too. This has been like my pattern of bronzer. I do forehead and then I take it down the neck just cause I want it to all mesh. Sometimes my neck is just a lot lighter than my chest for whatever reason. The neck gets kind of a shadow, I guess, from the chin. And then I'm not gonna try to even really apply this shade as a contour. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more on my brush and sort of just go across, across the top here. <laughs> it's just a little sun. I just gave myself a little sun. Not much, just a little. It's a perfect description actually in the title. Then you guys, I got the most beautiful blush. I don't remember owning this blush before. Hold on, let me find it. It's called Hint and it's one of the loose powder blushes. I also own one of the Gen Nude blushes in Pink Me Up. This is a small size, I believe. I got it as like a free sample. Um, it's a really beautiful texture, nice and soft. And I believe there's also a, um, is it called Bear Pro? The Pressed Mineral Foundation? Let me know if you think that's worth trying also. But anyway, Bare Minerals, for as good as they are with the loose stuff, they do really nice pressed powder textures, both in their pressed eyeshadows, these blushes. So I would imagine their Pressed Mineral Foundation is probably pretty good too. But anyway, this is Hint, the blush color. It's got a little bit of a glow to it, and it looks like a kind of berry rose type color, kind of a natural flush. This is another brush from my Morphe set. I'm just gonna dab into that. You can kind of see by what collects there on the brush. It's sort of a deep shade. Like it is such a pretty like snow white kind of cheek. I don't know how to describe it. Now I am being a little careful as I put on this blush. I'm not buffing the crap out of it over the area where I really concealed the melasma, okay? I'm just kind of keeping it out here on the cheek and not trying to mess up other things that I've done. I've said it many times and I'll say it again. I feel alive in the makeup application once the blush goes on. Never skip the blush, people. Never skip it. Hint might be one of my favorite things that I've repurchased this go-round with Bare Minerals. It looks like nothing actually on the skin. It does not look like product is sitting on it. It just looks like, I don't know, beauty, natural beauty. Wouldn't it be cool if Bare Minerals made their little things like magnetized to each other? So, cause I'm like stacking my stuff up over here. I'm like, that'd be nice if they just cling together. I think I will use a little bit of this clear radiance. This is something I repurchased. I feel like I had a little sample of it somewhere along the line. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can do like a concentrated swatch of this product for you. Clear Radiance seems to have a little bit of a pinky tone to it and definitely some glow. I could see some people, you know, once this really gets sheared out, you could probably dust it all over your skin if you wanted luminosity everywhere. But I find that I can kind of concentrate it and it acts sort of like a highlight. Let me know what your favorite product from Bare Minerals is to highlight with. Um, but I'm gonna take a little bit of the Clear Radiance and I'm just gonna dust it kind of right on top of the cheeks. It's not like one of those cheesy like, hi, I'm a pink highlighter. It's just a really soft, subtle glow. That's how I describe it. And I'm not saying you have to use this highlight and this blush and this bronzer if you're using the Bare Minerals foundation routine because you can throw on whatever you want on top, honestly as far as I'm concerned, right? But I feel like when you apply a little bit of a glowy product of any kind, and you've done these powder steps, it's like, man, you could totally fool people and nobody would think that this has been a full on powder routine, right? Final thing I'm gonna put on here is some mineral veil. And I, what I purchased new is the hydrating mineral veil. What I already have is just an original mineral veil. I have something called, I don't know if they even make it anymore, but I have something called brightening pearl mineral veil. But Hydrating Mineral Veil was recommended on Twitter by the authority herself, Shelby Wilson. I hope she doesn't mind that I'm like holding her in such high regard on Bare Minerals, but she recommended this. I believe she also recommended the Complexion Rescue. What I've noticed about the Hydrating Mineral Veil is that it's like a whole other texture. It is so, so fine, the powder is. So like, I have a little bit of excess here from when I first tapped some out. And I'm just gonna use my full um, e.l.f. complexion brush here and pick some of that up. You can see it, some of it's going airborne. It's just a really lightweight powder. 
And I like that because I, I don't want to be putting heavy powder on top of all of this. But this is just how I'm finishing things off. And I feel like I haven't used this enough to know like how specifically hydrating is this hydrating mineral veil. But yeah, it just, it really does give a nice finishing touch to the look. I feel like everything looks a little more even right after I put this on. But that's my Bare Minerals face. So let's review real quick, everybody. I did the medium beige original foundation. I buffed that in all over in about three light layers. Then I used the summer bisque and I pinpointed that over like under eye, melasma, redness, you name it. For some added brightness, I used the well rested with a slightly larger brush and I kind of like went dab, 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 dab over this sort of swath of the skin or anywhere where you want more brightness because it's just a much brighter, lighter shade. And then boom, that's what I would call coverage steps. Then I went in with Bare Minerals brand like bronzer, blush, etc. And I don't think you have to buy everything Bare Minerals. If you wanted that look, that coverage look, you know, you could stop there and go with things that you already own. But I did use a little sun um, to kind of perk up my skin tone. I do love the hint blush. I think that's so, so pretty. I popped on a little clear radiance just for glow on the skin. And then I finished things off with the hydrating mineral veil. Now here's what I don't have from Bare Minerals. I don't have a brow product an eyeliner or a mascara right now. I have used Bare Minerals mascaras in the past, but I don't own one currently. Oh, I do still have a primetime eye primer, which I have loved this eye primer. My one frustration was that you just don't get a lot of product in here. I think probably about the time my obsession was sort of ending with this, I was realizing how good Milani was and I stopped using this so much, but I found like a new tube that I had here. I will put the primetime eyelid primer on from Bare Minerals. I'll do my brows and then I'll come back and use one of these Bare Minerals eye palettes. Brows check, eye primer check, and now I have pulled out uh, the three larger Bare Minerals palettes that I have. Um, I have some of those smaller ones still that are sort of like in this size of compact, like Power Neutrals was one of them, but I don't think they really sell those anymore. This I know is limited edition as well. I got this during the holidays. It's like world's most natural little eyeshadow selection there. So it's kind of between the Nudes palette or the Bare Sensuals. I personally love the Bare Sensuals, but I'll show you the Nudes, which this is a really pretty palette as well. It's all very like neutral to cool neutral. Nothing's overly warm here, but you do have a little bit of a bronze. But the Bare Essentials, guys, is kind of my love. Um, that top row that's happening here, like you've got some warmer shades, some peachy kind of rosy colors, and then more plums along the bottom. It kind of reminds me of like a blown up selection of the Happy Place quad. I mean, you remember that quad? It had that nice kind of rose gold peachy shade, also a plum, a couple of little basic neutrals thrown in. And I feel like this palette is actually that color concept just blown up a little bit bigger. I'm gonna start with Lure right up here. This is a really nice kind of kick things off matte crease color. Um, the textures of these shadows are so nice. As I've been rediscovering like Bare Minerals foundation products, I've been getting out my eyeshadows too. And I've just been remembering how much I love their Ready eyeshadow texture. It's so good. But they sort of remind me of a Lorac type texture. Um, there's a real creaminess to the touch on these shadows, but they're very soft and easy to blend. So that's Lure just lightly in my crease. Then I'm gonna intensify my crease a little bit with another one of my favorite shades, which is Catalyst right here in the outer corner. It's like a burgundy with a little sparkle. Amp up my crease with a little of that. So with this palette, I would say you can turn out sort of a burgundy berry type look. You could do a very natural like soft rose gold look, a light lilac look all the way to a deeper Plum. So it's a lot of my personal favorite tones in one palette. I know not everybody's dying for those shades all the time, but I think it's a well done palette. So when I say outer corner with that, I'm doing it the outer corner of the crease and I'm pulling it up slightly so I give myself a little bit of a lift, you know? Then I'm gonna take Fortune right here, kind of a pinky toned highlight. You've got like this quad of light shades right over here on this end. And hard to get is like a really brightening lilac -y color. Exposed is your white cream shade. Fortune is a little pinky. And Indulge is kind of like a cool gray blue almost. So I just take this out over the edge and it makes everything look a little more blended. That's Fortune. You could also do Fortune in your crease for a very light crease color. And I'll do a little Shazam 
just for a little sheen right up here under the high point of my brow. The little brush they give you is not bad, by the way, that comes in here. And I think I'm gonna take, let's see, let's do a little waltz. I haven't used this shade in a while. Waltz is very cool. It does have maybe just a hint of some purple going on in it. Kind of like a cool, light, silver gray little <laughs> purple. Hard to put your finger on it. I'm just gonna brighten up my lid space with that. And this is my little Morphe M506 Great Outer Corner Brush. And I think I'll work in a little bit of Mystify. Mystify has a little sparkle going on. It's a little purpley, not in a real loud purplish way, but more like plummy. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of this in the outer corner. But if you guys could let me know, is there an eyeliner, mascara, and brow product worth trying from this brand? I just kind of glazed over it, honestly. I was so interested in just the different complexion things from this brand. That was really my main focus when I was doing my haul. And I knew I had the eyeshadow palette, but I didn't really think much further than that. Then on the lower lash line, I think I'll do a little more of the Mystify shade. And I'm just using a pencil brush, so it's gonna be a really soft, definition down there. But I kind of want to keep this a lightish look. Like I said, we got some pictures coming up later today. I don't want it to be overly dramatic on the eyes. Just enough to kind of define my eyes a bit more. And so after this step, I think I'll step away and I will do my inner rim with my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight to brighten up that inner rim a bit. I will do some liquid liner across the upper lashes, pop on some false lashes, which I think are going to be my Coco Lashes in Soho, and mascara, of course, underneath that, and then we'll do some lips together. Okay, guys, here's my finished eye look. Um, I just popped on the lashes. I have on my Makeup Revolution Renaissance Flick eyeliner. Just did a little bit of a wing with it today but I'm really pleased with the eye look. I love that bit of lightness on the lid, the plum in the crease, and then for my lips, again, people love the Gen Nude liquid lip colors. I do as well. I think they're some of the most comfortable liquid lipsticks in the game these days, and I've gotten different ones in like little kits where I've gotten minis. More recently, I think I came up with a full-size trio, and I think I'm going to use Juju. This is a really pretty kind of uh, pinky rose type color. Another favorite of mine has been Boss from that line, and it's really more of a dusty rose. But yeah, these are very lightweight, very comfortable. They feel kind of mousse-like going on the lips. But you continue to feel like there's a little moisture there. They're definitely not the longest wearing liquid lipstick out there, although they do stay in my lip line, you know? So again, that's Juju that I put on now. I love that color. So yeah, guys, that's my full face, basically, of Bare Minerals. I feel like I kind of recapped things as I went along as far as all that face makeup goes, but I think for me, coverage-wise, the three key products... Now, I did use the Complexion Rescue also. I think I could have used a regular moisturizer and gotten the same coverage. It wasn't really a big contributor to the coverage of the whole look, is what I'm saying. I think the major three components were the original foundation, that summer bisque that I used for really targeted coverage, and then the well-rested that kind of smoothed out and brightened and sort of lifted up certain parts of the skin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you want to see a brand renaissance, a different like rediscovered brand, you want to see me dive in and sort of retry it, bring attention to a line that just doesn't get a lot of buzz, I absolutely love doing stuff like that. So let me know and thank you so much for your time. I will link to every product. I will also link to Shelby down below so you can check her out because she is a wealth of information on the bare minerals topic. So uh, thank you again and I'll see you later. Bye.